let's take a look at page um, is this 11 of the electrostatics packet so the second page of the electrostatic review um, so we grab this plastic bag rub it on a wool cloth and then we bring the bag near a wall and notice it sticks to the wall it sticks is you know in in quotes because it's not actually sticking it's being attracted electrostatically to the wall uh, so draw the charges on the bag and the cloth after they've been rubbed on one another so to begin with they're they're both going to be neutral all right but it says the um, plastic bag and we rub it on a wool cloth we notice it sticks to the wall so that means one of these whether or not it's the wool cloth or the bag becomes more negative so if we had the tribal electric series sitting in front of us we would notice that the plastic actually hangs on to electrons better and it will become more um, more negative so let's say I've got my my uh, wool cloth here um, it is going to lose negatives easier so it's still going to have some negatives left behind um, my plastic bag can't really draw a plastic bag yeah that's not terrible actually that is terrible um, but it will also have some positives in there as well but it's going to end up gaining some negatives from my from my wool all right um, so that would be charging by charging by friction right overall this object would be negative overall this object would be positive all right so let's draw the charges on the wall um, in the bag when they're sticking together so to begin with my my wall let's throw in another color just not to conf uh, confuse things any any worse than they are with my terrible drawings here but um, the wall is going to have some positives in there right? and they'll be equally distributed I'm just gonna put them close to the surface here because um, we really only care about the surface of the wall here and then let's go ahead and throw my negatives in there so that's what the wall would would normally look like now if I take my bag from up here and I put it near the wall what's gonna happen since the bag is more negative than it is positive so it's, it's negative overall the negatives that are in the bag since they're in excess are gonna start taking these negatives and pushing them further into the wall and so we'd end up with a whole bunch of negatives here and then we wouldn't really have any of these negatives here because right they've they've moved over here so then at this point I would have a charge polarization taking place because if I sort of had this imaginary line here even though this wall is neutral overall it's that some of my positives or my positives remain towards the surface and my negatives have been pushed further back so now I've got all these positives that are exposed overall my bag is negative so because my bag isn't interacting with the inside of the wall it's only interacting with the surface the bag essentially sees it um, in, in quotes because of course you can't actually see but it would actually like feel as though this were wall were positive to the bag and the bags negative so negative positive we got some opposites opposites attract right so this is what it would look like overall after the bag and wall were sticking together so to speak uh, what's the term that describes how the charges have been shifted within the wall? Remember, that's polarization. Right. Something's being polarized, it's being pushed to one side or the next. Um, kind of like polarization of a nation. If there's a if there's a you know dispute within a nation, sides can be so polarized. Um, they don't really see eye to eye. It's like the completely opposite sides. Um, polarization in physics is just simply I've got you know north and south end of a magnet or I've got a 
positive and a negative end of a um, uh, something an, ob an object that's charged. All right, number seven. You're lying on bed, uh, laying in bed, and pull a fleece blanket off you. You notice you must have been charged up because when you touch the light switch, you feel a static shock. Explain the process of how you got um, charged and shocked. So basically, you can you're welcome to read through all this, but basically, what happens is you end up with um, an imbalance of charges, right? Because if you pull the blanket off yourself. The charges are pulled from one object to the other. All right, so we're assuming that um, we ended up with the with the negative charges. So some of the negatives were pulled off onto us. It would mean the blanket is positive overall. So then if I end up going up to a light switch now, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to give off some of those negatives that were that were on myself to the light switch and I get the static shock. Now since this doesn't really specify, this problem doesn't specify which one becomes negative, which one becomes positive, we'd really need the tribal electric series sitting in front of you in order to do that. Um, you could also say that instead of you becoming negative, you could say that you became positive and then when you go to touch the light switch, instead of instead of negatives jumping from you to the light switch, it's the reverse. Negatives from the light switch end up jumping onto you and um, you end up with a static shock regardless. All right, number eight. So we're looking for a relationship in Coulomb's law to solve these these problems here. All right, remember Coulomb's law is technically F equals K Q1 Q2 all over D squared. Now we don't have to worry about k in these situations because it's one of those hypothetical situations like if if this were to happen what happens you know what what happens to our force overall if I double a charge cut it in half do whatever to it um, the reason that that is because remember when we're when we're looking for the relationship we're looking for a factor that it's multiplied by so am I am I increasing by 4 am I increasing by 10 9 2 whatever it is but in order to do that we're doing some division Right. To get this relationship of four times, I'd have to do one divided by one quarter. Well, if, since k is always nine times ten to the ninth, it's always going to end up being divided by itself. It's just going to be one in the end. Um, if in doubt, you're like, yeah, that confuses me way too much. Use k every single time. It won't steer you wrong. Um, it's just a, a little bit of extra scientific notation than you normally have to deal with, which is which is fine. Um, but if in doubt, use it. So let's take a look at this. We've got two charged particles next to each other. You move them closer, decreasing the distance by half. What happens to our electrostatic force between them? Um, so I'm just picking some numbers here. Um, it tells me nothing about doing anything to my charges, so I'm keeping these numbers the same. This is very similar to page, um, I believe it's 6 in the packet. If you go back and look at the um, at, at video for page 6. And then um, it tells me to decrease my distance by half. In this case, rather than starting with one for my distance and then going to a half, just because fractions can get a little bit funky, especially fractions that are already part of another fraction, um, I just said, well, let's go from two to one, because that's a really easy decrease by half. So for here, you might come out with something. If you, if you get different numbers here, you're going to come out with something different. You might come out with something different over here, too. But in the end, you should still have that as the same. My my force will increase by four times. That won't change. Maybe your number is you know six and twenty-four. That's still going to end up being a, a factor of four times that it increases by. Or maybe you'll end up with ten and forty or something like that. But again, still going to be four times. Um, B and C are are very similar. Uh, so I'll let you use some of the uh, same reasoning from part A here to solve those out. Um, same deal with number or uh, letter D as well. Um, the the only difference with D is it 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 goes a little a little bit further, one step further. So with D, we've got two pieces of tape. They're being pulled towards each other with six newtons of force. Stick both pieces of tape to each other, rip them apart, which triples both of their charges. 
You then triple their distance of separation. What's their new force of attraction? Well, we don't really even have to worry about this six newtons until the very end. Actually, it looks at part C, we've got to do something very similar as well. But we don't have to worry about this um, six newtons until the very end. Here's why. So if we if we look at you know part A and part B, we're we've been dealing with well you know what what happens to our force? Is it going to increase? It's going to decrease. What what's, what exactly is it going to do? Let's take part B for example. Force is going to increase by nine times. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means if I have an initial force of four, and it increases by nine times, four times nine is now I'm going to have a force of thirty six. That's what's going on down here. So if I figure out what my factor increase or decreases first, and then go back and look at the force to see how much bigger or smaller it's going to be, um, I'm in pretty good shape. So let's do the problem as normal. Everything tripled, charges, distance, everything. Well, if everything's increasing at the same rate, my force isn't going to increase or decrease. It's actually going to stay the same. And mathematically, that supports it. Going from 1 to 1 is no difference. There is no change. So that means if I had a, a force of 6 newtons to begin with, I'm still going to have a force of 6 newtons to end with because it's a 1 to 1 ratio. Backing up to part C here, because I did I skipped over that, um, not realizing that we, we, we do have this force in here that we got to deal with, um, that, that helps us talk about it a little bit better. So if we end up with a charge that stays the same, another charge that gets cut in half, a distance that stays the same, it looks like overall my force is cut in half. And my force decreases by a factor of two times. Either either way, we could say that. Well, if we look at our original force, it says originally the force was 10 newtons. Well, think about what does that mean to cut the force in half? Well, it means that if my, f if my force was 10 to begin with, now it's going to be 5. If this number were 20 to begin with, now it's going to be 10. But um, it, it, it doesn't matter what numbers you choose here. As long as you know the relationship between the two, after you've done whatever the problem is telling you to do to the numbers, you're in good shape because then you can just refer back to the original force. Whatever the uh, problem is telling you to do to the force, that's what you'll do to the original force. So this gets cut in half. That means this gets cut in half. You're left with 5 newtons. So you may wonder, well, what happens if I've got different numbers than you? Right? What if you had something, something else over here like 10, 10, which would make this 10 and 5, maybe you had 100 down here and 100 down here, you're still going to end up with a relationship that gets cut in half. So maybe you just end up with giant numbers here, 1,000 and 500. That's still a relationship that's cut in half, so you'd still end up going back to 10, cut it in half, and you come out with the same answer in the end anyway, which is pretty cool. All right, Let's take a look at the multiple choice review in a little bit.